First up, Oregon, down in California, down in Berkeley in the Bay Area. Now, the last six games in this series, they have alternated wins between the Ducks and the Bears. Last year, California clobbered the Ducks 28-3, but in the first half, Oregon quarterback Bill Musgrave went down. Well, you know, unfortunately for the Ducks, the same situation exists this year. Uh, Danny O'Neill is out with a dislocated thumb on his passing hand. Brett Salisbury is replacing him. He has not started a ball game this year. He's been injured the better part of the season. So they're going in there a little bit handicapped in that position, Don. So everybody offensively has to step up a notch. Defensively, they've lost Matt Labonte, their defensive end. He's good against the rush and the ground game. Yeah, well, he's been a premier pass rusher in the conference, and particularly for them. He also plays the run extremely well. Now, that knee injury they operated on this past Monday is going to put him out for three weeks. That's going to put more pressure on their linebackers at this point. They're going to have to pick up the slack in that category, uh, particularly against that tough rushing game of the Bears. Yeah, they are so physical. And due to the injury to quarterback Danny O'Neill, as Don said, a new name will fill that position. One more big challenge, Ducks, today. For the second time in three conference games, the Ducks will go with a quarterback who has never started in a Division I game. Junior college transfer Brett Salisbury will take the reins when the Ducks invade Strawberry Canyon. Salisbury takes over for Danny O'Neill, who suffered a dislocated thumb and will remain on the sidelines the rest of the season. In fact, Salisbury himself is coming back from injury. A hernia suffered in week two of fall camp kept him out of the lineup until two weeks ago. I know what Danny's going through, and I, I know the exact situation, but it's just now, uh, you know, the time I'm going to have to step in and do the job and uh, play some good ball games. In two relief appearances, Salisbury has connected on 67% of his pitches and two touchdowns. He adds a new dimension to the Oregon attack. I like the things he can do. He's got a good, strong arm. He's got a quick release, and he has the velocity on the ball to get it there when people are open. It's something that we haven't had for quite a while. But this is his first start, and to make matters more difficult, it comes against a Cal defense that likes blitz a lot. It's a tough defense because they are always blitzing. If they don't blitz them, they, they look like they're blitzing, you know, even if they don't and stuff. And so, but we're making, you know, some blocking adjustments and some route adjustments. And, you know, I think, I think we'll be able to take care of it. Good news from the medical front has been rare for the Ducks this season. But last week, tailback Sean Burwell returned against New Mexico State. His big playability should take some of the load off an inexperienced quarterback. A sidebar to this series is the fact that the visiting team has won four of the last six meetings between these two squads. The Ducks are hoping history repeats itself when they visit the Bears this weekend. In Eugene, I'm Todd McKim for Pac-10 Preview. One to the California Bears. Brute coach there, co-Pac-10 coach of the year last season, has really stuck to his philosophy, and that is to develop a reputation as a big, strong, physical well-rushing football team, and that's exactly what they've become. Yes, well, not only in that area, Don, but the whole attitude of that team has been turned around with Bruce Snyder. He has made them physical. There's no question about that. But it's reflected more by their aggressive defense at this point. They've changed their whole style from that standpoint, and they have become very, very proficient mm -hmm. at doing it. It's really a credit to Bruce Snyder. Mm -hmm. Quarterback Mike Pulaski, are you surprised at his development? Well, you know, in a sense, uh, I'm a little surprised to see the strides that he's made, but he has certainly worked at it. He spent all last summer working on throwing the ball long, becoming more effective in that category. He has excellent receivers there. He's learned to read defenses better, makes better decisions. Occasionally, he does make some mistakes and try and force it, but they all do. Yet, he's a lunch pail kind of a quarterback. Yeah. You know, he's going he's gonna to lead that team, and he'll do whatever it takes. If it's running, throwing, throwing his body around, mm -hmm. you name it. Mm -hmm. He's almost like a Billy Joe Hobart at Washington. Tough, fighting type of guy. In a game like this, the kicking game is even more important. And Cal has one of the hottest kickers in the conference. So, here's the Cal Bears and, uh, well, tailback Russell White, leading rusher in the Pac-10, and uh, Mike Pawoski, the top passer in the nation. Think of the Bears, think of those two guys, and... And Doug Ryan, who is the top-rated kicker in the nation, right? Yep. We should know you, right? Yep. More than yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's connected, is 33. Pawoski to hold, the kick is up. The kick is good! 47 yards for Doug last week against UCLA. It's the second time this year a Doug Bryan kick has won a game for Cal, and therefore in zip. And I think Doug was a walk-on a couple of years back. He earned his spurs uh, against Arizona. There was three seconds to go to win a big game, and he did it. Kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's fun to um, help the team win, especially when I haven't played for two years. It's nice to contribute. And why haven't you played in two years? Because Robbie Keane has been the kicker for 
the last four years, and this is my third year in the program, so I redshirted, and then last year I was a redshirt freshman, mm -hmm. and I didn't play either of those years. 18 of 19 point afters, 8 of 10 field goals. Doug Bryan is the most efficient kicker in the country. So, when White and Pulaski are the Bears you think of, well, they should know Doug Bryan. Yep. You say yep a lot, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> For the Bears in Berkeley, the Pac-10 Preview, I'm John Hank. All right, thank you, John. This is a revisit, you might say, of the old Civil War in the Willamette Valley. Bruce Snyder, head coach at Cal, played at Oregon in his college days. Rich Brooks, head coach at Oregon, played at Oregon State. Well, these are two very competitive guys and two very competitive football teams. And when you match them up from the start, the offensive line initially, two good ones, but Cal gets the edge. When you look at the running backs, tailback Sean Burwell is back after some injury problems earlier. But Russell White, who sat out some practice this week, incidentally, and fullback Greg Zomal has had an injury situation, they still are a little stronger in that category. Quarterback-wise, Mike Pulaski has been hot. 70% completion rate, 10 touchdowns, leads the Pac-10. And when you go to the receivers, that's one of the big reasons. They get the edge with the receivers that they have. Defensively, if Matt Labonte were not out with the injury, I'd say that Oregon gets the call but as it happens I say even linebacker wise Oregon does get it there and the secondary they're third in the conference in pass defense they will be tested severely by the passing game of the Bears kicking it is even and intangibles well as far as Oregon is concerned tough road schedule four out of the next six on the road this is the first big one for them and when you look at the Cal Bears they cannot look ahead they cannot look over to the Washington Huskies. This is the big game for them at this point in time, so that's going to be significant. Well, if they lose to Oregon, it does, it, the meaningfulness yes. is not there against Washington, not nearly as much anyway. Well, there's a whole lot of celebration.